And is this uh, Brian? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. With um, you say F A S T fast? Did you say? Yeah, that's How correct. You doing? Yeah, good, 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 Brian. How's everything going? Not bad. Happy Saturday, by the way. You too. Um, Brian, and am I catching you at a good time? Uh, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. It's only going to take a few minutes. So basically, Brian, I am one. Of, I'm one of the purchase manager um, at the company, and calling you back regarding your property that you have spoke with uh, one of our um, one of our gal at our office saying that you're interested in you know possibly selling it or getting a free no risk no obligation cash offer correct uh, yeah who's uh let me ask you a question um, yeah you, where are you based at? you're based out of Bellingham yeah yeah yep that is correct but uh, but uh, Brian hey, we, who's uh, what's the uh, what's the owner's name yeah so uh, our company is fast property solution Brian but we buy property all all across uh washington states so basically okay, yeah but but uh who's who's the owner of the company the owner of the company is john john what what what's john, john's last name john hansen john hansen okay yep all right well go ahead now yep not a problem so basically brian um i'm just gonna go ahead is and he review ba he's based out of uh he's based out of bellingham too yes yes he he, he is cool. like uh the whole company is based out of bellingham so Brian, what I'm going to do is, yeah, not a problem. Brian, so what I'm doing is I'm just going to review all the information on the property here really quick with you, um, just to make oh, sure dude, everything. Dude, I'm, I'm dropping my kid off at a birthday party. Oh, no problem. You call me back in about an hour. Okay, you want me to call you back in about an hour? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I'm not, sorry, I just have to check in. Brian, not a problem. I'll call you back in about right, an great. hour. Yep, no worries. Yep, right, bye. Great, bye. Yep, bye. <laughs> a lot of, so this... You get you guys. You gotta be quick on your feet. You gotta be quick on your feet, man. So when when they say something, you gotta be quick. Like I didn't even know. I was like, oh wait a sec. I was gonna say calm, but I just introduced myself. Uh, it's gonna be real bad. But uh, this 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 is what I mean. Like like you, like you gotta roll with the punches, man. Like you gotta be on top of your game. Like it doesn't matter what seller I talk to. I, like I've been doing this for like twelve years, and it doesn't matter what kind of rebuttal. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of um, what kind of like objection. W w what they come at me, I always have an answer. Always. If I if you don't have an answer, so let me give you some tips, you guys. So let's just say if the seller asks you something if you don't have the answer. <laughs> Someone actually searched it up. So oh, we I actually wholesale a lot of deals to him. I actually did. Um, I wholesale a big deal. Um, I actually hope now I I, uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it because now I am um, I'm giving him a lot of business for nothing. So I used to wholesale a lot of I used to wholesale a lot of property to him, man. And one of the biggest deals that I did with him, uh, we made seventy five. I made seventy five thousand dollars on a wholesale deal. Um, but but I wish I would have kept it instead of wholesale it. It was a um, it was a nine units. It was a nine units, um, kind of like a, uh, they're all townhouse, so they're all separated uh, by a wall, but but they're all separated, dude. It was in a really good condition. When I wholesaled it to him, I made 75 Gs, um, but that property would have worth, like the day that he bought it, he probably gained like maybe 3,000 or three, yeah, 300,000 in equity the day that he signed the closing. I made 75K. He made 300 G's, but now he probably made probably close to a million dollar on that property. But a lot of time you got to do what you got to do, right? Um, so anyways, um, I've been doing this for like 12 years, so it doesn't matter what the sellers say. I, I, I always have an answer. I, I, I can always come back with something and just hit him. Um, so I got another one I got to call here really quick. I, I, I don't have to do this on a Saturday, but I'm doing this. For you guys for the one that loves my content for the one that follows i'm doing this because i want to give back i want to add value to you and i know a lot of you um like it when i do a cold call role play when i talk to seller that you get a lot of value out of it because a lot of you i think that you you re that's what you really need uh help on that you that that you're just terrible at talking to seller oh what the heck i was supposed to be on youtube as well ah oh, shit ah oh, shit okay hold on a second let me click on uh I'm supposed to be live on YouTube as well, but uh, screw it. I won't. I'll just be live on Instagram. <laughs> all right. So let me call. Um, all right. I'm going to call Randy. Damn, I'm supposed to be live on YouTube too, but oh well. It's okay. 
Instagram fam. Hello. Hello. Good. Um. Good afternoon. This is Colin with Fast Property Solution. Is this uh Randy? Yeah. With, with what? Yeah, Randy. So basically, I'm one of the purchase managers. Supposed to call you back regarding your property there that you have spoke with one of our gal that you're interested in. You know, possibly selling or receive a free, no risk, no obligation cash offer from us. Is that correct? Oh, I'm actually in the middle of something. Right oh now. shoot. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry, but no, not a problem. But Randy, do you have like five, like it, it should only take about like five minutes or so. Well, right now in the middle of a haircut. Oh, I, oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Randy, let me call you back. Okay. Thanks, man. Have a good haircut. Bye. Well, 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 that, that, that didn't go so good. Okay. He answered. So, so right now, currently I, I have a CRM that track all of my seller leads, all of my buyers leads. Also too is it keeps track of all of my VAs, all the tasks. So right, so when I go in, I make a call, there's, I just need to push a button. It will automatically send that leads and it'll update that leads automatically. So if you know, if you want to use the same CRM that I use, DM me the word, um, CR or comment, comment the word CRM. I'll send you the affiliate link to the one that I use and they, Dude, this CRM is so badass that I that I want to keep it a secret. <laughs> so um, yeah, comment the word CRM, but it does it, it, it is going to cost you some money. So um, it's really badass, man. It keeps track of all your seller leads, so so it really helps out your funnel. It really really helps your funnel a lot. Um, so who else? Uh, okay, that's all I need to call. Um, okay, so I don't have any other leads that I can call today. So. Who wants to jump on a cold call role play? Punch in your phone number, or yeah, call me your phone number and uh, I'll bring you on. So call me your phone number and I'll bring you on. Maybe I'll have to put star 67. Shoot, I don't have my other phone. Um, it is not free. So for those of you, if you're starting out, like if you're new and if you're looking for like a decent, not you know, a decent CRM to work off of, then Podio. I recommend Podio. If you're new, you got no money. It's, it's free, but if you got some money, you you want to level up, you want to really scalp your wholesaling business, you want to get a bad, a better, and a more badass CRM, then comment the word CRM, and uh, I'll send you who I use. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna do. Okay, so instead of putting in your phone number, let's do let's do it on Instagram Live. So just raise your hand, I'll bring you on live. We're gonna do about one or two, and then I'll call this a wrap. Okay, because I thought that I was able to get some seller on the phone. Um, so if you want to jump on a call, just raise your hand. Just come in the chat with the emoji. Uh, with the emoji, raise your hand, and I'll bring you on a. Um, I'll bring you on a role play, and then we'll be done. Yes. So Joey, yes, that is correct. So if you're looking for something that's free, if you're new, Podio is probably the best to start because it's free, right? It costs you nothing. Um, but if you want to level up your, your wholesaling business, right? You want to get something more badass, then, uh, uh, comment the word CRM. I'll send you who I use. All right. So, oh, okay. Toy. Okay. Toy. Let's go. Toy. All right. Any more view. <laughs> uh, Hi. Toy, are you ready for this, Em? Hell yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, so uh, hey, yeah, I got a um, I got a call. Uh, I got a postcard by you guys say you guys want to buy my property. Is yeah. that what I'm supposed to say? <laughs> well, no. Uh, so we're doing a cold call role play. Okay. So, so am I the cold caller or no, you're gonna be the cold caller? I'm. So I'm. I'm gonna be the seller. You, you're gonna be the buyer. I'm gonna be the buyer. Okay. You're just that way i've never held sales before so okay so which means you have never cold call before no okay so which means this would be a good practice for you yes are you ready i'm ready all right well hey i got a postcard about you guys saying you guys want to buy my property what's this all about uh yeah i heard it was uh, in the market no my pro no my property was never on the market i don't know okay. i don't know i don't know i don't know where you get that information i don't know where you hear it but it was not on the market Oh, I apologize. Well, now that we are on call, would you, are you considering it? Or do you have anyone that might be considering selling your property? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, if the price is right, then I would consider mm -hmm. selling it. Okay. So what would you say your uh, happy price would for you would be? I mean, it's, it's it, I mean, on the postcard said that you guys 
you know, have an offer for me. So okay. I was, I was curious <laughs> what that is. Okay. So let's, I mean, I saw your property. It was listed for $300,000. Is that something that you're happy receiving or would you? Well, um, okay. Well, listen, I mean, I just mentioned that I never list my property. I, I don't know where you got the information, but it was not listed. I got a postcard by you. You said you guys want to buy my property. You had, you said you got a cash offer. So I, I was just curious what the offer would be. Got it. Okay. So the cash offer, I think if you would consider it would be $300,000. <laughs> no, no, no contingency. Okay. Okay. Close so in uh, one week, how's that sound? So $300,000 and you guys can close in one week. Yeah. Well, I mean, so how much are you just going to put down? I, I don't know. Give me, give me something. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm sorry. Uh, so what's your name? My name, my real yeah. name. Yeah. My, my name is <laughs> Jackie. Oh, Jackie. So Jackie, Jackie. So when, when it comes to negotiating is that we know that whoever, whoever mentioned a number first loses. Ah, so, okay. so, so when a seller, right. So, so I understand that this is like your first time doing it, which is, I completely understand, especially when we're doing it live and you, you know, it, it's kind of nerve wracking, but, um, Jackie, if I, Hey, how's it Sorry. going? Sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries, Jackie. So Jackie, if I were you, if you're serious about getting into the game, I would highly recommend that you need to go onto Craigslist and start calling people. Right? Start calling people, start talking to people. Um, I would also recommend that you would watch some of my YouTube cold call roleplay. So that way you can under so you can understand. So because Jackie, there's there's a lot of things that uh that you miss. For example, you know, you forgot to get the seller's name, you didn't re build rapport, you didn't get the proper address, um, right? So you didn't get the motivation. So there's a lot of things that you miss. And typically uh, what I can tell you, Anna, is that you want to stay in control of the phone call. So to be to be in control of the phone, yes. you need to always answer a question and then come back with a question. So for example, I so for example earlier I said, hey, I got a postcard from you saying you just want to buy my property, man. What's this all about? So what so what I would do, Anna, is I would take that I would take their uh, their question, and then I would form it, and then I would take that into a, an answer and then come back with a question. So typically, so I would say something like this. So I would say, okay, got it. So I understand that you just got a postcard from us saying that we're interested in buying your property or making you a free, no risk, no obligation cash offer. Is that correct? You see how I answer that question? Because you, you don't want to ignore it. Cause a lot of you, what you do is you, when you don't under, when you don't have to respond, you kind of ignore it or shove it under the carpet, right? Or, or, but you don't want to do that because when you do that, then you will cause the distrust. So you want to answer their question and then come back with a question. And that's how you maintain control of the phone. That's why I said, so you want to receive an offer. Is that correct? So as a seller, you would say, correct. Right? So when you, now you answer my question, guess what? Now it's my turn to talk. So now I got to be in control and then I'll come back and be like, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, but I didn't catch your name. What's your name? Oh, Jackie, great. And then I come in, Jackie, I build rapport. Jackie, happy Saturday. How's everything going? It seems like, you, right? So if you hear like, so if I were on the phone with you, Jackie, if you were a real seller and you, and you got a baby uh, in the background, I would say, oh, Jake, right? And then I would somehow build rapport. Oh, it seems like, you know, obviously it seems like you got a kid in the bed, blah, 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 right? So you come in, you build the rapport. And then after that, you want to get motivation. Okay, it's like find so, their why. So, yeah, so typically, Jackie, I when I when I typically when we call the seller for the first time, within like a minute or two, like I want to get the seller motivation, and the re and how I get and how I get their motivation, Jackie, is by saying this. So, Jackie, I understand that you call him from our postcard. I know you want to, you know, I I know that you want to get an offer on your property, right? And um, you know, beside the price, right? And then I would say beside the price. What's another reason that you would consider selling? All right, Jackie. Sorry, I'm trying to find paper to write. Okay, so you find them. 
when someone gives you an objection like that and they're just yep. saying like, well, how did you get my number? Why are you calling me? I'm not interested right. in this. How do you Good. segue that into saying, well, since we're on call already, you know, Got it. right. To you. No, Jackie. So those are, those are great. So, so let me help you. Let me help you overcome the number one. So the number one is you just said, so how do you get my number? Right? So Jackie, most people, which is the newbie, the amateur, most, most of them will say, well, you know, I got your phone number from public record. So instead of saying that, I take it up a notch and be more professional. I would say something like this, uh, Jackie. I would say, well, you know, I was giving a, a, a list of qualified property owner to call to see if they have a house or property that they're interested in selling or receive a free, no risk, no obligation cash offer from us. So Jackie, are, are you interested in selling your property or at least get a cash offer? So Jackie, do, do you see how I answer your question? And then I, I, I continue, like I don't stop because what happened Jackie is if you come back and you just answer my question, well, now it's my turn to talk again, right? So the seller will keep on questioning you over and over and over and you will lose control of the phone call and it will just come off like you don't even know what you're doing. So always make sure to be confident, right? And, and, and the best thing to do Jackie is when you get on a call, especially like when you're new, you never cold call before, you never talk to a bunch of seller before, it's never set expectation. And, and here's what I mean, like, like don't expect like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna close the sell. Like, like call, them, call them out of like no expectation, right? And hey, if I can help them out, if we can make a deal, great. If not, I'll just move on to the next one. Because when you have expectation, um, Jackie, that's when your heart will pound a little bit more and then you get really nervous because you just want to turn it into a deal. So you're afraid like, oh my God, what if I mess up? What if I say something wrong? But when you have no expectation, you're just having fun with it and you just call, that's the best way to go. All right? Okay, okay Jackie? Okay. All right, awesome. Jackie, I'll appreciate Thank you on the so live. Much. I'm gonna let you go, okay? Thank you, appreciate Thanks, Jackie. it. Yep, thank you. Jackie, it seems like you're Vietnamese and I want to say this in Vietnamese, Jackie. Có con mày sắc, có ngày xin ăn kim, có chí thì nên. All right, Jackie. So you can do whatever you put your mind to, Jackie. I know that you may be a stay-at-home mom. Jackie, you can do this on the side. You don't, you don't even have to leave your house. And when you're on the phone, Jackie, and if, you're, if your baby cry or make noise in the, in the back, don't worry, right? Don't be like, oh my God, that's not professional. Don't. You, what you want to do, Jackie, is you want to leverage that. And I promise you, Jackie, when you're able to leverage that, and by saying, oh, I'm sorry, I got a kid in the back. You know, I'm working from home today. The husband's at work and he couldn't take care of the kids. When you're able to leverage that, Jackie, and come in and build rapport that way, I promise you, you will actually win the sale over and you actually go gain their trust. Because now they can relate to you. Jackie, you got to understand, the person on the other phone is just another human. They're no different than you and I. If they're in a situation, they're willing to talk to you, they, they need your help. And if they're not, then, then they're not the type of seller that we're looking for. Then it's just going to be the next one. And Jackie, if you're able to just call like you're working for a company, Jackie, I promise you, you're going to win them over. Right? You'll be like, oh, my God, you right? Because you can build rapport. It's been a long day. I'm so sorry. So if they ask you something where you say something where it doesn't make sense and they're like, oh, that's kind of weird. You'll be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. It's been a long day. But you know what? Unfortunately, I don't have the answer to that. What if, you know, I I I'll, write down your I'll write down your question here, Mr. Seller. Right? Let's just say it's Bob. I'll write down your question here, Bob. And then I'll talk to my team manager to get you the correct answer right, for your question, because I don't want to mislead or misguide you. And then what you want to do, Jackie, and then you bounce back into your script of, 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 of doing what, and, and, and asking them whatever you need to ask. But the, but the thing is, Jackie, don't feel like you, have, you need to have an answer to every single question that the seller got, especially when you're starting out. The reason why is because if you're just working for a company, I don't expect you to know the answer to everything. Make sense? That's why a lot of you say, well, Colin, why don't you negotiate like you're the buyer? Because it makes, it, it makes the negotiating a lot harder, a lot tougher. You see, when you go to a dealership, most cars, man, most, most, most car guy that comes out and helps you, right? Those sales people, they already know what's the lowest they can go, what's the lowest they can offer you. But what they do is they play the good cop, bad cop. They'll be like, well, you know what, man? I don't know, man. The sticker price is 300K, man. 
You want 10,000? 10, 10, you want 10,000? I don't know. Dude, they know they can probably drop 20K. But they'll be like, well, I don't know, man. It's, you know, that car is popular. It's selling. But what I can do is, you know, let me take this to my team manager, right? And then I'll see if I can get that approved, right? But if I can, are you ready to go, right? So they play, they, they play that game with you. Because now you feel like they're working for you instead of they negotiating, like, against you. Does that make sense? Now, 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 now you feel like, oh, my God, okay, so he's wanting to help me or she's wanting to help me. That's how they win the conversation over. Make sense? But also, honestly, all they do is they go in there, they drink coffee, and they're like, yep, we got them. We got them. Boom. We got them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Jackie, I truly hope that helps. So remember when you negotiate, Jackie, always make sure that you're just working for a company. And by doing that, by prepping your mindset like that, that you're just working for the company, which means you don't take things personal. So when a seller cuss at you, yell at you, scream at you, you know that you're just working. Hey, I'm just clocking in, I'm clocking out. Right. And you're just helping them. If you can help them, great to make a deal. Great. If you can't, then no problem. And so, Jackie, I hope that helps, okay? So remember, don't get nervous. Don't get, like, just be confident. If you don't know the answer, just tell the seller that you don't know, and you get them, you will find a way, you will get them a, an answer to that. And by saying that, Jackie, you actually will even gain the trust even more. Because you're not the know-it-all. So I would say, so let's just say, Jackie, you're the seller, and you ask me something I don't know. Instead of coming up with something like you don't really know, and then they go and find out that you don't even know what the hell you're talking about, well, guess what? That deal is done. Like, you don't think the seller's going to search it up, but they will. It's done. So instead of that, you're burning the bridge. You just say, Jackie, that's actually a great question. You know, I actually just started working here about six months ago, but I love the company already. Dude, this, this is how you freaking kill it and build massive rapport. I do this all the time. Check this out. So if 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 if, if a seller asks me something I don't know, dude, I will go into this mode. I'll be like, Jackie, that's a great question. I actually just work here for about six months, but I love the company because we're here to help people, you know, get out of a certain situation or, or get their property sold. And we typically buy, you know, I like I've been working for six six months and we typically pay the most compared to like other company out there. Um, but I don't have the answer, right? So now, guess what? Oh my God, let me put you guys on the real game. So by saying, okay, so when you tell someone that your company is good, that you offer the most, no one trusts you. No one trusts you because you're, because you, because to them, you're selling yourself. That's why word through mouth or referral is such an easy close. Make sense? Dude, let me put you guys, man, real game. That's why referral it's such an easy close. If someone refer me somebody, I'll be like, dude, it's done. Especially that person that I can, can trust. Game over. It's easy close. So now when you're saying, oh yeah, you know, you're just working for the company and you love working for the company. Who loved, who loved their boss? Who loved their J-O-B? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. But then you tell them, hey, I love the company I work for. They really help try to help people out. You know, they really pay the, you know, try to pay the most they can for their property, your property. Boom. Now they fall in love. Make sense? Subaru, Subaru WRX, man. So, so remember, Jackie, so instead of saying that, saying, hey, I'll get you an answer to that because I don't want to give you false information just because I just work here, you know, just about six months or so or just a few months in. Make sense? Done. All right, one more. Who else want to jump on a cold call? Colin, what's a good skip tracing? Um, savvy investor, do stay tuned. Um, I currently work with a company right now, the best skip tracing company ever out there. We've been using them for so long. I finally partnered up with them. Dude, they have the most accurate and probably the most affordable. Um, so stay tuned. I'm going to be launching right now. It's in beta mode. Only my students actually have access to it. Super cheap, super cheap because it's in beta mode, but I'll be launching it soon. And uh, it's very accurate. And you would have you would have paid like 20 some cents. Instead, it's like 12 or 15 cents. So way cheaper. So stay tuned and I'll make the announcement. Um, I need to see how you exit. 
I need to see how you do exit strategy. Um, Jay, what do you mean by exit strategy? So when I wholesale, Jay, there's only, there's really only one exit strategy. When I wholesale is to be able to walk away and cancel the contract. That's the only exit strategy, my man. When, when, when I wholesale, that's my only exit strategy. Now, when I, well, now when I decided to go and tackle a property that I either gonna buy and hold or I wholesale or Airbnb, then obviously there's gonna be a different strategy, right? So when I know the property that I wanna buy, I would look at what kind of rent it brings in, right? So I know if I wanna keep it as long-term or, hey, can I do this as an Airbnb? So those are, so those are the exit strategy I look if I were going to actually move forward to actually buy the property. I don't fix and flip. The only time that I would fix something up is to keep it. Because I play the whole fix and flip game, it's not worth it. Let me tell you this, man. Fix and flipping, especially in today's market, is extremely risky. Very risky. You have to buy it at like a 30, 40, 50% discount. Like the, like the, like if you were to buy it at like a 10, 15% or 20%, dude, that's, that only works a few years ago. Now it's just so risky. I don't want to fix and flip. I've done that for four and a half years. It's a nightmare. Who wants to babysit contractor? Who wants to deal with the city? Who wants to get permit? Who wants to relist the, the property with an agent? Especially with the interest rate today. Waiting for four to six months to get paid. You know, within those four to six months, all you need to do is one, do one deal a month at 25000 sorry, at $25,000 a pop you would have made 75K, 100K. Instead of fix and flip, puts, puts you know, if, if you, in my area, you would, have, you would have to put, you know, three, four, 500,000 up at risk. I don't care if it's your money. I don't care if it's private. I don't care if it's hard money. It's risk. That's the risk you have to take on. Okay? So why would you want to risk that? And, and, and why would you want to deal with the, the headaches? and wait for four to six months to get paid when you can just wholesale it, mix less. So instead of 50K, I'll take the 25K, I'll take the 25K and run, close it in 15 days, turn around, take that money, invest it back into the marketing, get another deal in a contract, make another 25K. And I can just, just like Jackie, I, I can, you can be at home with your kids, you can freaking be in Bora Bora, you can be in Cancun, Mexico, and you can be able to close these deals, no headaches, no stress. Lon and I, dude, we have, we have gone through so much. I used to thought I used to thought that I want big company, hundreds of employees. I used to, until I did it, and then I'll be like, well, I didn't have hundreds of employees, but I have like employees that actually come to the. I was like, dude, this is not the game I want to play. I want to be free. I don't want to be trapped in a box. I don't want to show up to a certain place at a certain time. I don't. I don't want to have like in person employee. It looks cool and all of that, but, but honestly, in today's age, you can build virtual business, makes you a couple hundred, makes you a few million a year. I'm cool with that. I, I, I don't need tons of employees. I don't need a bunch of overhead. I don't need the headaches. I don't need the stress. Because a lot of you just don't understand. A lot of you don't understand that, you know, the hardest thing is working with people. The more employee you have, the more headaches the more drama, like what, like, dude, I'm about to turn 40 this January. I don't need the prima donna drama. Lon and I, dude, Lon and I, when we go to bed, dude, I sleep like a baby. I, dude, I sleep like a baby. I don't care nobody's knocking on my door. I don't care, no, like, I don't care about my phone is gonna ring because I know it's not drama. When I, when I used to fix and flip, this is, dude, this is, this is 12, 12 years ago. I started out fix and flip. I was, I, was, I was always so worried that my phone ring. And my phone, my phone, dude, blow up all day long. It would just keep on ringing, ringing, ringing all day long. Now, the only time that my phone ring is Lon call me or my mom or, 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 or my sister. That's it. RJ, what up, what up, dude? Bro, damn, I thought you were 21. Ah, oh, dude, RJ, come on, man. Shit, bro. What do you want, dude? Um, but, you know, so Lon and I, you know, we just don't want the headache. We don't want, like, the time, like, to me, man, right now, time freedom is the biggest thing. Being able to wake up to do whatever I want, wherever, whenever, and with whoever the F that I want. 
So Lon is about to say F you to somebody because she's like, dude, I'm done with you, dude. dude I don't need your money. I don't need to work with you because anything we make is just cherry on top, right? So she, she literally, this, it just happened a few days ago. Dude, it was crazy. Lon's like, F you. I don't need you. I don't care about you. I'm done with you. I don't need your money. Take it and shove it up your, pretty much. Now, now listen, I'm not, now when I say that, I'm not at the point where I have the F you money. I don't have the F you money yet. But I have enough money to say F you. <laughs> to say that I don't want to do business with you, bro. Make sense? Like, I don't have the F you money yet. But I do have enough to say F you. <laughs> Anyways, I, so, so Lord, I realized that, you know, like, if Jackie called me or if, if like the RJ. So if, if RJ hit me up and RJ said, Kong, let's go to Bora Bora. Literally, Lon and I can just pack up and go the next day. We have no string attached. All my, all my employees are virtual. They work from home, right? I don't have inventory. I don't have stocks. I don't have things that I need to go pack and do, right? So long as I can be anywhere, as long as we have a laptop, a phone, and Wi-Fi, dude, I'm good to go. And that is the business that Lon and I have been wanting to build forever. But a lot of time, it takes you to go through a certain a certain path, right? For you to realize what you want and what you don't want. Make sense? Sometimes for you, you, you have to go through the pain, right? To understand that, man, this is not what I want. This is what I really want. And I can tell you guys right now, a lot of times when something don't happen for you, don't cry about it. Honestly, trust the process. Don't cry about it. Because sometimes that thing that you want the most might be the worst thing that ever happened to you. Ask me how I know. Come on, man, shit. That's why I'm, I'm able to sit here and just spit game and it just flow. Because everything I tell you is from experience. It's not from reading a book. It's not, so, it's not from watching YouTube video. It's from experience. That's why I can just sit here and just talk. So there was a house that I fought hard to win over. Dude, I, I, I lose sleeps about that house. I was like, dude, I'm gonna make 125 Gs on this house. And I was planning it and I, how I'm, how I'm gonna get it under contract, how I'm gonna buy, how I'm gonna beat all these investors. I want it so bad. And when I actually got that house, it was also the house that almost made me bankrupt. True story. My mentor, my mentor knows about this house. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, right? Even if you plan a vacation trip, you plan it out and we're going to be so good. And all of a sudden, dude, it's the, it's the worst trip ever. But when you don't plan it, dude, it'll be, dude, this trip is amazing, right? Like when you just kind of go with the flow and it doesn't, you just go with the flow, trust the process. It's just the trip went amazing. Do, do you agree or disagree? And what I, because a lot of times when you, you, you got to understand that just trust the process, have faith. Believe in God. Now, I'm not trying to be religious, but I can tell you, I wouldn't be here to do what I'm doing right now and making the kind of money I make. To me right now, what I do right now, the money I make, dude, I call this easy money. Because I see people, man, I see contractor. They are on the rain right now. Hammering, contractor, construction worker, truck driver. Dude, like I see my sister sitting at the nail shop, at the nail salon, waiting for customer to go in. And all I do is, dude, I woke up and made $900 from TikTok. My sister would have to grind two days to make that. It's just too easy. You know, so for, for, so for me right now, dude, I'm just super extremely grateful for everything that I got in my life. And there's only two people that I can thank. Number one is God. Without God, I wouldn't be here doing what I do. Because there's so many times that I would have went bankrupt and I would have lost everything. That's why to me, I always believe that never forget where you come from, right? And when you are at the top, when you're at the top of your game, that's when you gotta be the most careful, my friend. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying here. For those of you, and I think Jackie can relate to this, Jackie. For those of you who gamble, who play car, who play blackjack, I don't care what you play. I used to go home and play poker all the time. 
and this happened all the time. So listen, when you're at the top of your game where, you, where things are just going really good, you're making a boatload of money, that's when you gotta be the most cautious. You know why? Because you get, because it's easy for you to like, oh, here's a thousand, here's 10,000, here's, ten, right? Dude, I used to win, like, you used to win the poker chip, and you'd be like, here, 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 I don't really care, I got a lot of stack left. But by the time you know it, it all just goes away as quickly as it comes. So that's what, because that's when you lose, that's when you kind of lose yourself, right? You got too cocky. That's the word. You got too cocky. You see, it's good to be confident, but it's never good to be cocky. RJ, dude, I learned all this from my man, RJ and Sam. Sam, what's up, dude, RJ? You know, and a lot of times you guys, you, a lot of you guys, you need to change your circle of influence. The people that you hang around with. It's okay to like, just the, the friends that are not growing or don't want to grow or, do, or, or don't have the ambitions, the drive like you do. Let me say that again, because it is true. You are the average, like your income is the average of the five people that you hang around with. If you imagine, imagine, imagine if you hang around with me, dude, I'm going to be like, Hey, did you make call today? Hey, there's an opportunity. Hey, there's this, Hey, there's this that we can do together. You see, those are the kind of people you want to start to surround yourself with. If you want to elevate, if you want to get to the next level of your life of financial freedom, if you want to make more money, hang out with people that are actually making more money than you. You see, a lot of you, all you do is that you go to work, you get off work, and you still hang out with the same coworker that are making the same amount of money that you are. They have no ambitions. They have no drive. They, they're drifters. They're not a thinker. They don't want to go anywhere with their life. And it's okay. Those, now, I'm not looking down, I'm not looking da down at those people. They, it's fine. But don't let them hold you back from your goals, and from your dreams and be extreme so that's why you got to be extremely careful of who you share your goal your visions and your dream with because they are a dream killer out there this could be your mommy your daddy it could be your best friend and let me explain to you what i mean by dream killer it's when you you tell them you're going to do something they'll be like yeah dude it's not going to work man too much risk. You're gonna fail. You tell them. You sound like a little bitch right now. Leave me alone, motherfucker. Right? Hang up the phone. Block them. Block them. So I remember. So I remember when I decided to quit my J O the B at the age of 26. My coworker said, "Con, you're making so good money. I, we will see you back because you're not gonna make it." Guess what? All the ones that said the same thing are still stuck at the J, O, the B, and are still miserable working for someone. And now that they saw me, they'd be like, hey, Kong, hey, what you do now, bro? So what you do now? Dude, I got no time, bro. <laughs> like, listen, it's not that I don't want to help them. I love helping people. I said, hey, I put a, a bunch of content, but you want my time. And that's what I, I think that's what a lot of you, like you're entitled. I get people DM me and say, come, oh my God, how, how dare you? I thought you want to help people and you wouldn't even pick up my call. Son of a, who are you? And listen, when I first got into real estate and I, right now, this is real talk. I don't sugarcoat. I don't cherry coat nothing. In this real world of business, my friend, let me tell you this, dude. Money talks, bullshit walk. I, I have to pay for every connection. I have to pay for all my resource. It didn't come for free. I didn't get no handouts. I don't believe in handouts. When you give something, when you give anyone something for free, they never cherish it. They never care about it. Nothing. It's, the, it, it's when they have to bleed. That's when they value it. Just like, just like when you, just like when a guy 
trying to go after a girl. If you're too easy as a girl, I promise you, that man is not going to value you. If, 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 if he comes at you and, and on day one, you let him have it, <laughs> you guys know what I mean. You let, him, you let him have it, it's game over. He'll be like, it's too easy, dude. So as a girl, do so, which means if you, you want to raise your value, you got to know your worth. So make him fight for you. If, he, if that guy loves you, he will fight for you. He will. And if he don't, then he's just looking for an easy get in, get out, one night stand. That's not the man you want to be with anyway. Why would you? I know I'm talking about a bunch of topics, but it all comes down to one thing. All right? And any guy that you, like girls, any guy that you date, all of a sudden, like, date, date and then he, he wants to do 50-50 and split, and don't want to be the one that, hey, I'll take care of that for you. Like, actually, like, approach. Now, you, as a girl, you don't want to be like, hey, I got a bill. Like, don't be that type of girl, right? Because you don't want the guy to think like you're a gold digger and, 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 and you're all in it because of that. But if that guy comes, dude, that's the right dude. Man, I was brought up, in, like, I am, I'm very tradition. So I, so I came to America at the age of nine, but throughout my whole entire childhood and throughout my whole entire life, I watch a lot of Chinese movies. So I'm, I'm an old soul. I'm very tradition. Like, I'm so old tradition where I believe that a girl should save her virginity for the right man. That's how tradition I am. And I believe that the girl that would save that for you, she deserved the world, especially during this time. Every girl just on, just on social media shaking their butt left and right, man. They have no value anymore. No morals. Nothing. So I, I, I'm like very, very, very tradition. Even, even when it comes to like doing business. Even when it comes to like doing business. <sighs> Anyways, um, I don't know what else to talk about here. Let's, let's, let's get some questions. Um, okay, let's see any question you guys got. Lopez, what's up? Um, Jackie, let me give you, Jackie, I would, I would, um, Jackie, let me give you another let me give you another hustle that you can do, Jackie. Jackie, I think that, I don't know about like being on social media and creating content, but I also think that's a great opportunity uh, for you to go down. If you haven't really looked into what TikTok has provided as far as like opportunity for people to like make money on social media, game changer. Game changer. Um, all day CJ said, Kong, have you tried wholesaling business? Let's connect about it. No, man. No, I don't. And let me tell you why. Because there's so much opportunity that present to me. And I have made the mistake where I try to put my hand in too many different jars and I get crushed. So I just focus on what I'm good at. And there's only two things that I'm good at right now, bro. One is wholesaling houses. The other one is social media. That's it. I, dude, I lost so much money in crypto, but I believe that it will go back. I, I, okay, so let me tell you guys another story. This to going back where I said, be careful when you're winning. So it, I think it was like 2021. Dude, I was making so much money. It was coming in left and right so much. Well, a lot to me. Dude, I was making like three, four, four, four hundred thousand a month or so. And, and I got cocky. So I went and took $650,000 and put it to crypto, but not into like Bitcoin or Ethereum. I, I got Bitcoin, I got Ethereum, but I was just having so much fun where I lost control. I was buying so many different meme coins, like any coin that people will talk about on TikTok, I would go buy it. I would drop 10K, 5K, 10K, 5K. I'd be like, yeah, I'm making so much money. Eh, let's play. That's what happened. I, I, I couldn't keep track of it. dude. There was a time where I have over 26 different crypto. I couldn't even keep track of it. One of the crypto, I actually made 90 Gs, but I didn't know. I couldn't keep track of it. I didn't cash out. So now I lost it all. So now I only have like Bitcoin, Ethereum. I still, now I'm down to like, I think I only, I'm, I'm at like about 300,000 or three, 350. 
but do you guys understand the stories that I'm telling you and how everything just connected? Right? If, if, if I would operate like I used to operate, where, I'm, where I stay on top of my moldy, I know where my moldy goes, what goes in, what comes out, it will be harder for you to lose. So I don't know what you check every morning, but here's what I check every single morning. I check my bank account every single morning. Every single morning I check my bank account. I need, do you need to stay in, your mind needs to be on your money, your money needs to be in your mind. You need to stay on top of your money. If you don't, especially even if you have a business, you need to know if your, your, your business is profitable or not. A lot of you don't know that, a lot of you don't even know if your business is profitable. Because you know why? Because you don't stay on top of your finance. Dude, I've seen so many business owners, like real legit, like they're making millions of dollars. But dude, when it comes to like their number, they don't even know if they're making money or they're losing money. They're paying left and right. Like the money just goes in and out. Like they don't even know. They lost control. And when they sit down and they look at their like their, their P&L, profit and loss statement, they're not even making money. Because they're so worried, because they're so busy. And they lose control. So remember, I want to let you guys also know that it's not about being busy. It's about being efficient. It's not about waking up four o'clock in the morning and doing some spiritual shit that's going to make you successful. Let me say this again. I don't know about other people, but I will, I, I, I will share with you my journey and my experience. I don't wake up at four o'clock in the morning. I don't meditate. I don't do no spiritual thing. I do pray, but like maybe one minute. I, I, I just pray to God, right? God, like let this day go good, right? But, 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 but you don't need to wake up at four o'clock in the morning, dude, right? You, you don't need to soak yourself in hot, cold water, right? Now, if that's what you want to do, that's great. But I'm just telling you what I did or, and what I didn't do, what people said you should do to become successful, and I still made it. And let me tell you what, I, what it is. For me, it's more about the action that you take. What are you, de what are you doing during the day? That, my friend, is what your, see, the action that you put in is what is the result that's going to come out. So I care more about the action, what you do during the time that you are awake, instead of waking up at 4 o'clock and then sleep at 4 and then, and then Go to bed at four, <laughs> right? So Lon and I, you know, Lon and I, we used to grind all the time. I, I remember wake up at five o'clock in the morning, go to the J or the B, and I hate it. Lon and I just, just don't want to wake up early. And, and we said when, when we make it, dude, there's no alarm clock. Lon and I wake up whenever we want. There's no alarm clock. We work so hard to set an alarm so I can wake up at four to do meditation. Come on, man. Shit, bro. So I don't do that. So I wake up, I check my bank, I check my credit card. I need to know what's going in, what's going out. And then I, I go on my social media, right? And then I start to plan out what I need to do. And I go and I take a shower and I execute. And I just put in the work. I don't overthink. I don't journal. I don't write down journal, none of that. Whatever goes, do it. Just take action. Just do it. That's, that's my whole attitude is just do it. A lot of you are afraid to take, a lot of you, this is your, some of you, this is your problem. A lot of you, you want more. You want to do, right? You want to make more money. But you're afraid to take the leap of faith. You're afraid to make the next move. Because you know why? You're afraid that it's the wrong move. You're afraid that you will fail. You're afraid that you will lose the money or the investment. So you don't make the move. So you just stand there, sit there, thinking, contemplating, debating, whining, complaining like a little bitch. <laughs> oh man, he and she is making money already. But uh, why am I not? Dude, the worst move you can make is not to make a move. Let me say that again. It's not about making the wrong move. But the worst move that you can ever make is not to make a move. Let me tell you why. Because you will never know until you try. 
Like you, like you will never know that the move that you're about to make will be a wrong or the right move if you don't make a move. So it's the worst move to make. It's not to make a move. Imagine if you're like, oh, I'm going to climb up on this hill, but then you're sitting there, you're planning about how you're going to get up to that mountain. I'm already here halfway up, baby. Come on, man, shit, bro. So you're sitting there, you're planning how to get up on them, how to go up in this mountain. I'm already halfway. Where you at, bro? You see, at least when you make a move and you be like, oh, man, it's the wrong move. Well, guess what, my friend? You adjust and you adapt. The road to success is not a straight line. Like, what don't you guys, like, what don't you guys understand? The road to success is not a straight line. Just like a marriage. A marriage is not always, it's not perfect. It's not always rainbows and stars. Any couple on social media or you see in person that puts out the image like they have the perfect relationship, I'm telling you right now, that relationship is a disaster. There is no such thing. Couples, we fight. We figure out each other. It's always under construction. There's always things that we have to work on, right? So don't buy into that bullshit. And a lot of you do never, ever, ever compare your relationship to somebody else's, especially if it's online. You only see a minute of their relationship five minutes of their relationship. Why would you want to compare that? Why? Because everybody only wants to put out what's good, not what's bad. And everything you see is good. And you'll be like, oh man, my man don't do this. Well, shit, dude, come on now. But did you know that her man did this to her two years ago? Cheated on her, backstabbed her, but that chick still stay with that dude. <laughs> did you know that story? No, you don't. Why would they share that story to you? Why would someone, why would someone want to lift their shirt and show you their scar? Why would someone do that? Nobody will. So the worst thing you can do in a relationship is number one, compare your relationship to someone else's. Number two is trying to change the person into someone else that you want her or him to become. That's the worst. They will, you cannot change them and mold them into someone that you want them to be. You can only help and embrace them to become the person that they wanted to become, a better version of themselves, but not into the person that you want them to become. So let's just say you date a player. He always go around, he always go poke around. You'd be like, yeah, you, you know what? I think I can take this guy under control. I think I can bend him, shape him, mold him into the man that I want him to become. Never gonna happen, never. A cheater will always be a cheater. Jackie, I hope you can translate this for me. I'm gonna say this in Vietnamese, but I don't know how to translate this. In my country, there's a saying, Yang sơn giới đổi, tánh tình khó thai. I can't even, I don't even know how to translate that. But in my country, when a person lied to you, cheat on you, scam you, they'll do it again. They only say, I'm sorry, because they got caught. They only say, I'm sorry, because they got caught. It's extremely, extremely rare that someone would change for whatever. That's extremely hard. It's, it's because it's a habit. It's very hard to break. Anyways, so um, let's move on to other questions. <laughs> how do you feel? Um, how do you, Lam said, how do you feel about absentee owner? Great list to target. Great list to target. Great list. CJ said, do you want to, um, CJ said, how do I get uh, the contract? So if you want the contract, man, just comment, comment the word contract. And uh, I'll send you my contract that I used for the last past like 12 years. Yeah, man, dude, a snake will always be a snake, man. A rabbit will always be a rabbit. You can't change a rabbit into a horse, baby. <laughs> so you know like my philosophy and how i live my life is i would say like like if you're asian if you're vietnamese like you probably understand what i'm saying but my philosophy and how i live my life has a lot to do with all the chinese movie that i watch 
So let me let me tell you guys another story. You know, in the whole Chinese movie, everybody wants to fight. First, they want the money, then they want the fame, then they want to take over the empire, then they want to be the world leader, the king. And throughout the whole period, throughout the whole entire time, it was just stress, drama. They weren't happy. They were killing people, stepping on each other, stepping on other people to get to the top, and all of that. But honest, but at the end of the movie. The main character, all he wants to was life of freedom, peace, peace, life of freedom. Him and his girl ride the horse in the sunset, travel, and just having an amazing time. So that's why Lon and I, you know, we used to, we we used to like, oh yeah, because there's there's there's, there's no cap. Like if you're just if you're just continue chasing for the money, it will be endless. You will never be happy. So you gotta set a mark. So like, you know what, this is it. I'll be happy when I get there. Anything else I make, it'll just be cherry on top. Because honestly, like Lon, Lon used to want like a big mansion. But as she gets older, she's like, you know what, Tom? We only sleep in one room. We only use one, two bathroom. You one, me one, right? So she's like, yeah, you know what? I'm very content, very happy with the house that we live in right now. But she said, if we ever get another house, it's just, it's not going to be massive. It's just going to be, you know, her room is going to be bigger, bigger closet and all that. But anyways, just want to share that with you guys. But at the end of the day, it's just, you know, making sure that you're able to get to the point where you can do um, the things that you love to do. And I think a lot of you can be financially free if you understand how to live below your means, even if you work at a J-O the B. So that's why, like, I, I believe that if, you're, if you live in America, the land of opportunity, where anybody can get rich, anybody can be financially free. I just don't understand how you guys can complain about going broke. I just don't understand. Like, I just don't understand how you can complain about being broke. You don't have the money. Because look at the things that you buy. Look at the clothes that you wear. Look at the apartment you live in. Look at the house you live in. Look at the kind of car you drive. Come on, man. Shit. If I, if, dude, if, if I'm making millions of dollars and if I'm not wearing designer clothes, why are you wearing designer clothes? Dude, designer clothes are made for the rich, but, but majority of the people that buys it is the poor people that wants to look rich. Most rich people, that they already got the money. Now, I'm not saying all of them. There are rich guys, millionaires that want to wear designer clothes. But I can tell you right now, when I go to these masterminds, I would say 80% dress very normal. T-shirt, jeans, very normal. But they're loaded. But there are 20%, right, that actually wear designer. So from so for me it's like always you know Lon and I when we when Lon and I when I Lon and I when we were living in the shed behind a mobile home park I would see my friends and my family with new car every two years you know how they buy a car they trade in they get a new one every two years I'll see them carry Gucci Louis Vuitton and they come and borrow me money motherfucker I made the sacrifice oh man I'm about to go at it that's why I don't tell my family that I'm on social media. Because if they watch my live, dude, it'll be game over. <laughs> so they come and borrow. Where, were, where was I when you went to a freaking, you dropped 5000 on your vacation trip? Where were I when you bought your new car? Dude, I was the one who made the sacrifice. When you were living in a nice house, I was living in a shed. When you were driving a nice car, I was driving on my beat up 1997 Honda Accord. When you were eating fancy dinner, lobsters and steaks. I was eating top ramen, noodles, rice with soy sauce. I made the sacrifice. You didn't. And you come back and ask me for money? Come on, man. Shit, bro. You know, to me, there's nothing wrong with working at jail to be doing what you want to do. If, if you want to spend the money that you make, that you work hard for, and you just want to blow it, that's fine. I have, dude, I have no problem with that. But, but you know what I have problem? My problem is they whine and complain like a little bitch. That's my problem.
My problem is you made the choices to buy the car that you shouldn't buy. You spend the money that you shouldn't spend to buy the things that you couldn't afford. And now you come back and you whine and complain like a little bitch to me and you want my help, you want my time for free, you want my money that I work hard for, that I save, that I make the sacrifice. Come on, man, shit, bro. Now, if the money was handed to me, that was different. But I have to believe. I have to work for hard for it. Nothing was given. Man, I'm sorry, man. I, I, I'm sorry, like, to take this to the, like, the next level. But I think some of you need to understand that. And I think, you know, the new generation, Gen Z, a lot of you guys are entitled. Go back to my country. Let me tell you why immigrants, when they come to America, why majority of immigrants, like if you compare it to like American, like people that are born here, why immigrants succeed, have a higher chances of succeeding. You know why? Because they understand what hard work is. Because they know that, man, in my country, I would have had to work 16 hours to make $30. Now I make $30 in two hours. No shit. They'll be like, dude, this is easy money. But the people that are in America, the people that live in America, they're like, oh man, I don't want to go flip a burger, man. I'm better than that. I don't want to be seen. In, I don't want to be seen. I, I don't want to be seen at McDonald's. Come on, man. Shit. But you ask for handouts. You're at home getting the government money. You need to have some pride, my friend. Have some pride. Get up. Go to work for your shit, man. Come on now. <laughs> like those, that, that's just something I don't understand at all. You know, that's why people that go to college, they have, the, they have this big ego. Oh yeah, talk about people that go to college. They have this big ego. Oh, you know what, I man? I graduated with a degree. I shouldn't be doing Uber. But you need the money. Why wouldn't you do it? Oh, instead you, instead, instead you slide to my DM and ask me for help? Oh, come, you can help me out, I'll pay you back, motherfucker. Nobody got time for that shit. Nobody got time for that, man. I've heard, I, 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 I've heard too many of those stories. That's why I don't feel bad. I, you know what, when I go back to my country, I feel bad for those people, or not just my country, but any country, because even if they want to escape, they can't. So when I post a video about like, you know, America is great. You know, America has land opportunity. If you can't make it here, you cannot make it anywhere. People will come in. People will be like moving their lips. So oh, I want to get out of America. You go. Go. You see, people that are in America, you have a choice to move wherever you want in this world. You get to go wherever you want. You get to relocate wherever you want. But do, but do you know that people in my country and other people in other country cannot do that? So, so if you don't love it here, move. Move. But all you do is you talk a lot of shit. But I don't see you do anything. Then move. But you see, people in my country, they're desperate for a better life. They want to escape. But they can't. They don't have a choice. You see, those are why, that's why when I go back to my country, I feel really, I feel really bad because I understand how hard it is. And let me tell you that Asian, why they are a better saver, like they're better at saving money than Americana. Let me tell you why. Because in my country, if you don't save, dude, when you get old, bro, shit. Man, I see a, nine year, not, I see a 90 year old lady in the streets, selling lotto tickets, 15 hours a day, just to make $15. The government ain't gonna help you, man. You're lucky if your kid is good and they can come back and afford to help you. But mo most of them have a family, they're, they're popping babies, so they, don't, they, they can't even afford you, even if they wanna help. But here in America, the government got you. 
So it's like two different worlds, you know? So that's why Asian, like they're all, we, we were brought up, we're always worried about the rainy days. We all want to stack away our money. We're always worried about our future, right? And I think that's, uh, I think that's, that's like the big difference. Anyways, I don't know. I mean, I got a lot of stuff that I want to talk about, but uh, I'll take a few questions and then uh, we go from there. I mean, I, I can talk about like dating. Like if you ever date an Asian girl, guys, let me tell you this, man. No girls want to date a cheap ass guy. Let me tell you this, man. No girls want to date a, date a, a cheap ass guy. And girls, if you have, if, if you're with the guy that is a cheap ass, why? You get, listen, if you're just in the dating stage, I call that the honeymoon. You know, the honeymoon stage is like the bubbly, the, he loves you, whatever you do, yeah, right? The honeymoon stage. And he's already cheap with you, with you. During the best time of your life, the honeymoon stage, if he's already cheap with you, you think that it will get better when you guys get married? Come on, man, shit. Get your mindset straight. When you guys are dating, if this guy is not like falling over you, fighting for you, giving everything, like doing whatever he can to, to, to get you to be the one and only, it ain't gonna get better. I can tell you that, dude. Like, Lana and I don't want to have kids, but if I have a daughter and this guy, like, don't pay for dates, like, the whole open door, like, I don't believe in that, but when it comes to, like, taking care of the bills, man, and if this guy don't have the gesture to say, hey, you know, I'll take care of it, right? Dude, if he's not doing that when, he, when you guys are dating, dude, it's going to get really bad when you guys get married. Really bad. Because now it becomes a used car. Dude, I don't know if Instagram is going to ban me. To me, it's like this, man. If you have a choice, if you can afford it, would you want exact same model, would you want a used or a new car? That's my question to you guys all. To the boys. If you have a choice where you can afford it, do you want a new car or a used car? And which one would you treat better? A used one? Or a brand new one. I mean, I, I mean, I really don't have to like need an answer. I already know the answer to that question. And if anyone of you said, "Oh yeah, I want to use one," stupid. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't joke. Like, let's be real now. So that's why, as a girl, you have to be. As a girl, it's so so important that you have to take care of your body. Like, I, I still believe that this is, you know, like, as a girl, dude, this is everything you got right here. If you want that man to respect you, and you want more respect, and you want to be treated like, like queens, dude, protect. Don't be shaking on social media. Don't be throwing your body out there. Nobody, wa nobody wants a used car, <laughs> all right? Nobody, nobody will treat a used car like a new car. That's what I got to say. But I see a lot of girls, dude. They're like, yeah, dude, my body count is 20. What the? 20? Your body count is 20. <laughs> dude, one is already too many. Let me say this again. Dude, if, if I hop on a podcast, dude, I don't know, man. Might get canceled. Like, listen, one is already too many. 20. And, and, and the girl will say, like, she's proud of it. Ah, I got a hundred. <laughs> like, dude, I don't know, man. Anyways, next subject. <laughs> <clears throat> so basically what I'm saying is that if the guy treat the new car like it's already used car, then what happened when the car is already used? <sighs> Let me say that again for those of you who don't understand. So if you're in the honeymoon stage, he already, well, he already calculating shit already. Oh, she's going to pay this. I'm going to pay this. I'll, I'll have to do this. Like if he's already calculating with you, Jackie, if you're still on here, let me say this in Vietnamese. Hopefully someone can translate. 
Ê, cái thằng đó nó tính toán quá lấy nó dời nghĩ là nó sẽ làm thì người chồng tốt hả nó đã tính từ ly từ tí với mình khi mà nó, nó mới quen mình mà nó đã tính từ ly từ tí những thằng đó xài không được khen bảo đảm với bạn luôn xài không được đàn ông gì mà ích kỷ nhỏ mọn tính toán vậy mà vậy, vậy mà vậy mà gọi mình là đàn ông Come on, man, shit. Vậy mà gọi là mình là thì đàn ông Con gái thôi Tính toán Ít kỷ nhỏ mọn Shit Never Never, 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 ever, ever Can step foot in my house Anyways, once again, I'm very, very old traditions And uh, I appreciate each and every single one of you That are here with me And um, once again I hope that this life add a lot of value to you. I know that I went off on some off topic, not real estate related, but I post so much stuff about real real estate related that a lot of you don't know what I stand for. So I hope that this live stream, I'm gonna actually put this on my feed so you know what I stand for. Because a lot of times you just watch like my quick one minute you know video on like real estate. You'd be like, oh, this guy's all about you know real estate, making money. Dude, it's more than that. I believe that characters, integrity, if you are a man, I don't care, man, woman, if you say you're gonna do something, do it. If you, you can lose everything in this world, but you cannot lose your reputation. If you lose your reputation, my friend, you ain't gonna be in business. Nobody's gonna do business with you, dude. You're not gonna make it. Your reputation is everything. Protect that thing, man. If you tell people you're going to pay them back, pay them back. You tell them you're going to do something, do it. There's no excuses. Let me tell you another quick, just a quick short story, and I'm going to wrap this up. So about 12 years ago, I almost went bankrupt, right? I had two choices to choose in my life. I either pay Uncle Sam or I pay my mentor. Because it's all the money I got. If I pay my mentor, then Uncle Sam's going to come at me. And guess what I choose? I choose to pay my mentor. And I don't recommend that you guys play around with Uncle Sam. But I choose that route because I'd rather put myself in a, in a bad situation because I've made a promise to this person that I was going to pay him. Whatever else happened, happens. But I can never go against my word. As a man, as a woman, I, I, I'm not going to go against my word. Especially when it comes to money. You tell them you're going to pay them, pay them. You owe them, pay them. Regardless of whatever it is that happens, you must do what you promise. Your word is like a, do your word weigh more than gold. But a lot of you are out there just spitting shit. You don't even, you don't even hold up to what you say or what you promise. How can you live with yourself? So the next year, it was, it cost me a little drama with Uncle Sam, but everything solved. I, I pay the money and all that. But I'm just saying, those are the choices that I choose. And I always, all about reputation and integrity. You can owe the bank, you cannot pay the bank back or the government. That's fine. They're big, comp right? They're fine. But when it's a person, an individual that believe in you, that trust you, that loan you the money, you got to pay them back, man, regardless of what you have to do. Period. Until next time, you guys, take care. And let's go get this money.